And then if you can get up to, you know, maybe 30% protein, you're going to pretty much reverse any prediabetes. You're going to see major reversals and improvements in any kind of type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance. And then you've got your bodybuilder crowd. And these are the people who basically improve body composition for a living. It's their freaking job. So um, all these people just live in a 30 plus percent protein range, maybe 30 to 40% protein. And, and then of course, if you look at worldwide hunter-gatherer macronutrient estimates, they're about 33% protein by calories. Mm -hmm. And that's because if you just go out in the wild and kill something and eat it, it's pretty, you know, you know if you just eat some wild game, it's pretty lean. The protein percent's really high. So, so you're really just kind of seeing this higher protein percentage as just automatically giving animals or humans lower body fat. For someone who's just lightly active or sedentary or whatever, 30% would be an awesome goal for anyone who's trying to reverse their type 2 diabetes, their metabolic syndrome, their insulin resistance. That would absolutely be my advice to anyone who's got metabolic issues. Uh, with, uh, with the caveat that if you're doing tons of exercise, that could be lower. So I do a lot of uh, very brief, very high intensity exercise. So my volumes are actually really tiny and I'm not burning a lot of extra calories. And so I do eat about a 30 something percent protein diet pretty much all the time. Um, you know, I'm, my goal is, you know, to be around 30% protein most of the time. And if I'm really cutting hard, it could be 40%. <clears throat> gotcha. Okay. So for a protein, I like about a gram per pound of ideal body weight, um, which, you know, if you're lightly, moderately active, is going to be around at the 30%. And why the high intensity versus say resistance training or anything else? Well, you, you're trying to get your VO2 max higher, right? So like, if you look at, if you look at, you know, longevity and health span and lifespan, the things that really, really stand out are the, the, number one, the higher your VO2 max, the longer you're going to live. You're going to have less cancer, less dementia, less, uh, you know, neurodegenerative disease of any kind. You're going to have all these, uh, longevity and health span benefits from high VO2 max. And you're just not going to max out your VO2 um, uh, capabilities without pushing that and trying to get an adaptation in that direction, which means doing something where you're redlined, you know, you're trying to achieve close to your maximum heart rate. Um, so you can, you know, get adaptations there. So I really like this high end zone five, um, you know, let's get your VO2 max higher type thing because it seems to be so beneficial. And you're just only going to get that adaptation from really high end exercise. It doesn't have to necessarily be for a long period of time. You can always have this seesaw trade off between intensity and duration, but uh, you get that intensity higher and you're going to get those positive cardio adaptations that you really want. DoctorsToTrust.com, the world's number one site for short, annotated nutrition videos.